All right, so you think feng shui is complete bullshit? Well, today I'm gonna share an experiment with you to prove you wrong. Alexa, what's the date? Today is Wednesday, November 8th. Okay. Let's hope it's in focus. Am I? Ready? Yep. <laughs> Am I live? You are. So you think feng shui is complete bullshit? Well, today I'm going to share an experiment with you to prove you wrong. This experiment is so much fun and I've had a lot of my previous clients do this experiment in addition to I also had my coach this last summer do this same experiment to help her understand what feng shui is all about. What's really cool about this experiment is that it shows you the power of language and the power that we really harbor ourselves. This is really an experiment that proves this idea of what the Chinese call yi. It's the power of intention. It's the power of our language. In the school of feng shui that I use, it's all very transcendental. So what does that mean? It's a big word, right? Transcendental is all about energy. It's about the power of intention, language, blessing, rit uh, ritual, ceremony, and all this idea of how we harbor an energy. In Chinese, this is called the Shu Shar. Shu Shar is all of this um, stuff that's kind of outside of the visual spectrum. The Shu Shar is all of the stuff that is illogical, unexplainable, unreasonable, and yet it works. This experiment was um, developed in the 90s by Dr. Masaru Emoto. What he did is this groundbreaking study on water. He took a hundred petri dishes and placed water inside of them and deemed their fate. Some of them were good and some of them were bad. It was that simple. The good ones were told words of praise, beauty, um, they were told they were wonderful, and all of these really positive, uplifting things. On the contrary, the bad ones were told well, they were scolded, but they were told very negative things and that they were really bad things. So the reason why this study was so groundbreaking was that he studied the cellular structure of what happened to the water under a microscope after these words were driven into this water. So what was so amazing about this study is that the positive Petri dishes formed these beautiful crystalline uh, snowflakes. Beautiful symmetry. Um, I mean, you can't even explain how wonderful they are. But the bad ones that were told they were ugly, scolded, and told of really bad things, they were fractured and fragmented and broken. Interesting because the way that I look at this is that you are energy, Everything around you is energy, so start with energy. What this experiment is all about is, and I would love it if you would join along and do this experiment with me because it's so much fun. Um, there's two different schools on how to do this. Um, it, what you wanna do is, we can't do water because most people don't have uh, microscopes in their house. If you do, cool, you can do this experiment. But um, another experiment that he did was with rice. And so that's what we're gonna do today is uh, a rice experiment. What you're gonna need is three jars. Uh, it does not matter what kind you use. Um, I tend to like these wide mouth mason jars. I think that they are a little bit easier to use. They have a wide mouth to them. Um, and it's also better if it's whatever you use, the container that you put it in, um, if the jar is fairly clear, if you use, um, like my coach uh, over the summer used 
Tupperware. And so it was just a little bit hard to see the magic that was happening. So I recommend clear glass. And then of course, rice. Cook maybe two cups of rice and just put water in it. And then what you wanna do is you wanna fill your jars full of rice. Those look about even. And you wanna write on one, love. So just like that. And then we're gonna seal this up. The second one, we're gonna write the word hate. Then the third one, we're just gonna ignore. This one gets nothing. What you're gonna do is you're gonna send those really good vibes to this one. You're gonna send this uh, jar, just really loving, kind thoughts. Tell it it's beautiful, tell it it's amazing. You know, you get the gist. This one, you're gonna do the exact opposite. You're gonna tell this one that it's awful. And I have to tell you, I actually don't do this experiment myself a lot because this really makes me uncomfortable. Um, I'm a pretty positive person and the Gates team and I, um, we really understand the power of language, especially with me being a feng shui practitioner. I don't like to do this because this one is very hard for me. It is very hard for me to um, take a, a specimen, even though it's just rice, it's very difficult for me to take this specimen and tell it awful things. But for the sake of this experiment, I'm going to do this because I want you guys to see what happens. And then this one we're just going to ignore. We're going to um, place this one with the other ones and we're not going to pay any attention to this one. Take your jars of rice and set them somewhere and don't move them. Um, some people will place them on their mantle. Uh, some will set them on their kitchen. Um, I, mine is gonna be in my kitchen next to Alexa so that I can um, ask her every day what day it is um, because we're gonna film that and I wanna put that on um, video so that you can see how it basically unfolds. But it's a really fun experiment to see the power of words and the power of language. Alexa. What day is it? Today is Wednesday, November 8th, 2017. Alexa, what day is it? Today is Thursday, November 9th. Alexa, what day is it? It's Sunday, November 12th. Alexa, what day is it? Today is Monday, November 13th. Alexa, what day is it? It's Friday, November 17th. I wanted to share with you today the conclusion of the rice experiment which we started two weeks ago and it's an experiment based on language so based on the words that you use and how you talk to things has an effect and so what we can see with the love conclusion is that the rice is actually still really pure and clean there's actually nothing that's wrong with it there's just one little blemish that's here and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Now, if we look at the uh, hate uh, rice, we've got mold pulling up there. And then underneath here, I don't know if that shows up or not. What's interesting is that the one that I completely ignored, we've got like this really funny looking fuzzball that's right there in the corner. So different results for sure. It is such a great way to get an understanding of the idea of transcendental cures or adjustments that I do in feng shui. One of the best things that you can do is really pay attention and be cognitive of how you are speaking to one another and the languages that you're using within your home. I actually have a term for this called above or below the cross emotions. So if you live in below the cross emotions, you live in shame and guilt 
rage, anger, and all the real ick in life. You know, those are really low vibrational emotions. If you live in above the cross emotions, you're in positive vibes, you're in love, you speak with joy, you find happiness in things, you're elevated, and those are really good vibrations. This experiment proves that the power of our thoughts and the power of our language matters. So when you look at this love container, this rice has been in here for two weeks and it's pure. So what I did is I was sending loving thoughts to this rice. And what I found so interesting about this is that I found over the course of doing this experiment, I was favoring this one. I was choosing this one over the other ones because I wanted to send this rice love and, and this was um, this resonated with me. This is my, my purest uh, emotion was to be able to easily send love and light um, and good to this rice. I really struggled with this one and so I'm really glad that I did this experiment because I really did not realize what I'm putting my clients through. Perhaps it's easier for them. It's been about a decade since I've done this, but I really struggled to send this jar of rice bad vibes. I struggled. And so what happened is, is I kept going back to this one because this is what made me comfy and this is what made me happy. So in doing that, this one we just completely ignored. We didn't pay any attention. We sent no vibes. We didn't send good, bad, or indifferent. We just ignored it. So it's interesting that it is fuzzy and doesn't actually have true mold. I think this is really indicative of really paying attention to um, the things that we ignore in our life and put off and procrastinate. They sometimes are the things that fester and become the worst. When I realized that I was favoring love and really um, sending all my positive energy to this one and not wanting to do it to the negative or the bad one is I started to feel guilt. And I realized when I started feeling guilty, which is a below the cross emotion, that is when this little red dot appeared. Now, I don't know if guilt is red or what that is, but it's not mold, but it's something. So I, it was really a great lesson for me to learn that when I started to dip into those below the cross emotions of guilt and maybe even a little bit of um, shame, maybe a little bit, um, it started to affect my positive vibes. It's proof positive. It proves that your language and the way you speak and the way you feel broadcasts a frequency. It broadcasts and shows up in physical form and has an effect. This experiment proves that the power of our thoughts and the power of our language matters.